for our meditation, let's turn to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Here God's word talks about fellowship. We read, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Sup with him means I will have supper with him. Yeah. Supper is a meal. Uh, like lunch, yes. dinner, supper is a meal. In olden times, especially in biblical times, uh, the culture was such that as families got together for their meal time, yes. they would talk to each other. Mm -hmm. They would share their thoughts, share their things. It was a time not just for eating. Yeah. It was a time... Uh, to talk to each other, to converse with each other. Because the rest of the day they will be busy with their work. The wives, the women would be busy with the work in the house. The men would be busy in the fields. Uh, the young people were also mostly working in those days. So when they got together for their meal, they would uh, talk to each other. That was the place for fellowship. So that picture is used here in this verse. And God says, the Lord Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. So it is not us craving for fellowship. God craves for fellowship with us. What a blessed thing. It's so blessed that God wants to have fellowship with us. And he is the one knocking at our door. He is knocking at each of our door. He is doing it personally. That's why we read, if any man, yeah. if any man yes. uh, hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him, not to them, to him. You personally. So we have a personal relationship with Jesus and we need to have a fe personal fellowship with Jesus. Fellowship is only possible if Relationship is there, right? Once upon a time, we didn't have relationship with God. Yes. We were sinners, we were enemies to God, we were rebels. We had no connection with God. Yes. But God paid such a heavy price to re-establish our relationship with Him. He shed His own blood. He came in the form of man. He gave Himself for us and He died for us. And he went through so much agony to give us a relationship. And because we have that relationship with him, we can have fellowship with him. But many a time in our Christian life, the reason for our weakness in spirit is that we don't have fellowship with him. We don't understand the meaning, uh, the deep meaning of having fellowship with him. Having fellowship with Him doesn't re just mean we sit and sing songs, worship, pray a prayer, read a chapter from the Bible and say Amen. That is not fellowship. So the picture being used here is, uh, first I want you to note this, that it is God who wants, wants to, to have fellowship with us. with us. That's why we read, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He is standing at the door and knocking, not we knocking. If any man hear my voice and open the door, all we need to do is open the door, respond to his call, respond. For example, now we are meditating on this verse. From this verse, what is God speaking to us? I want to have fellowship with you. So when you respond to that call, yes, Lord, I too want to have fellowship with you. And you draw near to God. That is uh, what is meant by opening the door. When we open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. The picture being used here is two people having a co common meal huh, and talking to each other. As two people talk to each other, there is a transfer of thoughts, right? At the start, the two are in 
different states but as they are talking to each other they are sharing their problems they are sharing their sorrows and slowly slowly they are influencing each other right that's what happens in fellowship when you are sitting with your friend you are not um, performing a ritual there is no pretending you are feeling free you are being yourself many a time in our fellowship we pretend what we are not we are not true to god we are not sincere we come with an outward show we have words we have we have glory hallelujah praise the lord but there is no sincerity so what i want to said before you uh, right at the start is what we need to ask ourselves what we need to examine in our lives is am i really having fellowship with the lord jesus christ as i usually say whenever you read a verse from the bible when you are reading this verse you need to ask yourself is this happening in my life is this happening in me can i confidently say that what is written here happening in my life as long as the answer is no as long as you you can't say confident it's happening maybe you you might say okay it's happening in some way but not fully till you reach the point where you can say confidently and honestly that this is happening in my life you should not take rest you should labor you should do all that you can all that you know all that you can you should do and you should not delay and you should not give up you should not get discouraged and you need to press press on put all your force into it till what is your goal i should find this happening in my per practical experience this should happen in in my life i should be able to say okay this is happening in my life till that time you need to labor so uh, we need to ask ourselves am i really having fellowship with god so as you're sitting uh, i i'm talking about personal fellowship we do have family fellowship and church fellowship but all of that is built on personal fellowship if each of us has a very close intimate relationship with god when we come together we can have fellowship a real effective fellowship and also as families this is also true as families also so we are built we are composed of individuals if each of us are cold in the spirit cold in our relationship with god if we come together what can you expect what can you expect you can't expect much so it all starts with our personal fellowship with god so i want to talk about that so imagine yourself uh, ideally in a room you are with your bible and with a song book nothing else mm-hmm. nothing else and your phone is muted your door is closed you are detached from everything else and as you are in that place what needs to happen is you need to hear god's voice and you need to freely pour out your heart before god that's what needs to happen that is fellowship and uh, that is not all that is at uh, the very start i just want to bring before you that's what needs to happen in that framework your bible reading must come in your prayer must come in not something else what you should have in your mind is not okay i'm going to read this chapter i'm going to pray for these things and i'm going to end no your desire must be your thirst must be i'm going into the place of prayer i'm going into the presence of god i want to pour out my heart before god i want to hear his voice i want to feel his strength inside of me that should be our desire uh, so for that uh let us uh, take a look at some of the hindrances how we need to prepare ourselves to have fellowship with god psalm 145 verse 
The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon Him, to all that call upon Him in truth. So we need to call upon God in truth. It implies sincerity. Be sincere. Be honest. Don't come with an outward show. Uh, alongside with this, let's also read Isaiah 29, verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Here we read, With their lips do honor me. Huh? Draw near me with their mouth. With their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. So our hearts can be far from God, yet we can praise God, we can draw near God with our mouths. And uh, here in Psalm 145 we read, Call upon Him in truth. So when we come into God's presence, in order to have real fellowship with God, we need to be sincere before God. We should not come with a, an outward show. We need to be thread and bear before God. Lord, this is what I am. You need to share your feelings before God. You need to talk to God as a friend. There is worship, there is praise. It's all true, but alongside with that, you need to be able to share what you are going through with God. Not just to have a solution for that problem. Many a time, we share things to have what? To have, fellow, uh, to have a solution. Again, imagine two people sitting and having a meal. They are talking to each other. They are two friends. Is one friend sharing the problem with another friend for, uh, as a plea for a solution? Is he requesting for a solution? No. They are friends. It's natural and spontaneous for friends to talk about their problems. When they get together, will they be silent? Will they uh, uh, request for a solution? No. They are sharing their problems. They are sharing their feelings. That is what real fellowship is. But as time goes on, we lose sight of this. It's a very simple thing. But we lose sight of this. And we end up with a routine. Okay, we come, we pray. And it goes on like this. And we don't find any strength flowing from God into our lives. We find ourselves time and again praying for strength, but there is no strength. Because you are not taking God as a friend. You are taking God as a helper. You are taking God as someone who is so far away. You come and ask for help, get help and go and you live your own life in your own way. That is the problem. What is supposed to happen is you need to have a close relationship with God like your closest friend. And just sit with him. Even if you don't have any problems, you should still feel naturally and spontaneously, I want to sit in the presence of God alone. When you have time to spare, okay, you don't have any duty. At that time, you should feel, not as a duty, you should feel, okay, I feel like going alone in God's presence and sit with him. I want to be alone. If that is not your position, then there is something wrong. You are not close with God. Yes. If you are close with God like a friend, you are not going there to read a chapter from the Bible. You are not going there to you know, sing a song or pray for a list of things. You want to be with your friend. And when you are with your friend, you will do those things. But that is not your goal. Your goal is not to get a solution from your friend. You want to be with your friend because you love him. Because you are close to him. You enjoy his company. You enjoy his fellowship. And for that you are going. This and your usual attitude toward prayer. Is there a great difference or not? There is such a great difference. And that is our problem. So we need strength. We need solutions to our problems. We need revival in our spiritual life. But all that is going to come out of Fellowship with God. So, we need to work on our fellowshipping with God. How are we having fellowship with God? So, first I said, we need to be sincere. Don't come to God with a song when you are 
your heart is somewhere else. <laughs> you are thinking about something else and you are coming to God and you are saying, Lord, I am so thankful. <laughs> but you are not thankful. You are not really thankful. You are singing songs of thanks and you are singing songs of praise. But you are, your heart is filled with something else. So being sincere is, you get into God's presence, don't come with a formality, okay, I'm going to one, sing one song, then I'm going to... No. There is no rigid rule like this. You, you do this, you read one chapter, then you do that. At the start, you need that. Right? When you come new to the faith, you don't know how to pray, we give you a form. See, do like this. But that is not forever. Because that's needed because you are completely new to this whole field. So we tell you, okay, read one chapter, okay, pray. But that should not become your whole uh, life story in Christian life. So as time progresses, you need to come to that level. Not very late, but soon we need to reach that level. And I believe none of us are too new for that. We all know how to pray. We all know how to sing songs. We all know how to read the Bible. So we need to come out of that form, that mold, and come to that fellowship. So we start with what? Nothing prepared. We don't come saying that, okay, I'm, I'm going to do like this. Come just as you are and say, Father, and just pour out your heart before Him. And whatever you are going through, if you are feeling bored, you say, I'm feeling bored. If you don't feel like praying, you tell Him, I don't feel like praying, Lord. This is what is wrong with me. You talk to him like that. When you don't feel like praying, don't pretend that, okay, I'm going to be very devout and pious. No. Be sincere. And, uh, and like that, you need to cultivate a close relationship with him. And for that, you'll have to detach yourself from other things, other people. You're close to other things, right? As human beings, we will be close to something or the other. Maybe a person, maybe something, maybe some interest. We are close to something. We'll have to vacate that. And that is where the problem lies. So first, we need sincerity. The next thing is, in our relationship with God, we know that we need to forsake some things. We need to forsake some things. In the majority of Christians today, there is a missing element. What is that? The price to be paid. Sacrifice. The price to be paid. The cost. About that, there is a loss of focus. Without death, there is no life. Without paying the cost, there is no you can't enjoy your Christian life to the full. So, it is very simple. You pay the cost, you will enjoy your Christian life. Amen. You go through death, you will experience fullness of life. Amen. But you are hesitant to do that. Yes. Some are ignorant, but in our case, we are not ignorant of it. We know it. So, sometimes we are hesitant to do that. So, we settle for something else. Anyway, how we have to, we need to have joy. We need to have some sort of peace, if not that fullness of Christian joy and peace overflowing in our lives. We can't have that without going through death, without sacrifice. And we are not willing to sacrifice. We are not willing to go through the pain and uh, deny ourselves. But still we need to have some joy. So we, we try to create some some mid ground. I can't go to the full extent, so we need we try to comfort ourselves with something medium, something moderate. And we try to feel satisfied with what we have. That is our Christian life. We pray, we read the Bible, and we receive some comfort, and we kind of uh, tap on our shoulders and say, okay, you're doing good. And we are satisfied, we are content. Why I'm saying this? We don't find ourselves searching. We don't find ourselves laboring, Lord, I want more. Now I'm telling you to labor, but do you spontaneously labor? 
No. If, why don't you labor? Because you are not aware that something is missing. You think everything is going okay. You think your Christian life is okay. You think your prayer life is okay. And you think everything is going okay. But it's not okay. There is much more that you need to enjoy in your Christian life which you are not enjoying. And the reason is, number one, I said, be sincere. Don't come with an outward show. Whenever you come to the presence of God, be what you are. And take him like a friend and share with him. Make him your best friend. Make him your closest friend. Unless you do that, you can't have fellowship with God. You can't treat him like a faraway person to whom you approach for solutions to your problems and then go and live your own life and then come and ask for some solutions and then go. If that is how you treat God, you can't have fellowship with God. And then we have God's revelation that to have fellowship with God, we need to forsake some things. So I'd just like to read a few verses uh, in relation to that. Luke chapter 14, verse 33. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. In short, what we see here is absolute surrender to the Lord Jesus. Absolute surrender. What you mean is, you need to become willing to forsake everything for Jesus. You take the whole world, but give me Jesus. Not just seeing it, but you need to reach that state of heart. First, you are thirsty for God. You want to have fellowship with God. Okay? There is a slight desire. And it, as the intensity of that desire grows, you become willing to give up some things. For example, you are thirsty for water. And I tell you, if you want to drink water in my house, you will have to help me with um, washing the vessels in the kitchen. And if you're not that thirsty, okay, I'm not that thirsty. I'll go to my house and drink. It's okay. I'm just going to spend here for an hour. Why will I uh, do this? Why will I humble myself like this? Why, why will I go through that humiliation? But if you're more thirsty, you will, you'll get ready to do even that. But if it's something more difficult, you'll try to, okay, I'll try to adjust with the circumstance. I will... I, I don't want to get, pay this cost. Mm -hmm. So according to your thirst, you become willing to pay the cost. Right? So, so imagine you are willing to do anything and everything. That is the greatest degree of a thirst. That is what we read of here. But when we read this, do we think like that? We think, okay, we are all okay. We are, our submission is okay. Our Christian life is okay. What is our calculation? I attend church, uh, I, uh, I give offerings to God, I pray, I read the Bible, I sing songs, everything is going okay, I didn't tell any lies, I am not cheating anyone, okay, I am not consuming any alcohol, I am okay. But that is not all, these are all just some outward shell like things. What about Luke 14.33? What about all to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give, what about that? Unless we come to that, we can't have fellowship with God. This is another problem. Okay, we need to take God like a friend. Okay? So when friends talk, it's not a one-way street, is it? When you talk, your friend also talks. Right? If you just keep talking, uh, is that fellowship? That's more uh, similar to idol worship. The people keep talking, that the idol doesn't say anything. But our God is a living God. You need to take Him as a friend. So you go to Him. And you say, Lord, I'm going through all of this. Uh, Lord, uh, these people are not, I, I have this desire, it's not fulfilled. I have this plan. What, how will the Lord respond? He tells, what about Luke 14, 33? Have you laid everything on the altar? Are you willing? So we can't avoid this. What I'm saying is, if we are to draw close to God, you can't avoid His will. You can't avoid His voice. You can't avoid these things. So because we avoid these things, we will avoid his fellowship. But the deception is, we can still pray. We can still attend church. We can still sing songs. We can, do, we can still do all these outward things. Even if 
the actual fellowship that is that was supposed to take place is not taking place understand even if the actual fellowship is not taking place you can still do these outward things and that is the deception and because of that we will think that everything is going okay but when we stand in the end of the day before the throne of god we will be ashamed we will be ashamed why you will realize clear as day that all through my earthly life i had this privilege i had this opportunity every day to approach the throne of god and to enjoy my christian life and to experience the power of god in my christian life but because of my negligence in paying the cost because i didn't take god seriously i didn't take god at his word i took god lightly i set my heart on temporary things in this world unimportant th- small things in this world i wasted my life i wasted my time we will regret so today what we need is absolute surrender but for that what we need not a commandment commandment is there but that's not enough because we are not willing so as i said if the thirst is too great you will be ready to do anything and everything so that is what we read here so likewise whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath he cannot be my disciple so you want to follow christ and the cost is you need to be ready to do anything and everything so a very important thing we need in our fellowship with god is you should be in a state of willingness to change we don't have that let alone changing changing is the next thing but before you change you should need to come into god's presence how god sees in your innermost heart you need to be confident to say lord if you give me the strength if you give me the grace i am ready to change in anything you tell me you tell me whatever you want i am ready to do it lord are we in that position if we are not in that position we need to come there and if we don't come there we can't have fellowship with god that is a problem so we come for prayer but why are we not able to experience that closeness we don't have that friend like relationship with him why not because there are some things in our lives standing in the way has hindrances and one important thing is we are not sincere we come and we perform a ritual we do some uh performances sing a song do all those outward things and go that is one thing the second thing is there is an element of death in christian life there is an element of sacrifice in christian life there we always tend to avoid sometimes what happens is we submit we walk according to that submission for a few days and then we uh, withdraw that submission withdraw that surrender so we are not fixed so our fellowship is built on a relationship with god so you made a decision before god god honored your decision you said i all to god i surrender you surrendered your body you surrendered your desires you surrendered your passions and then one fine day a choice came before you and god expected you to walk according to that and you didn't so after you did your own thing did your own will then you enter god's presence will there be a difference in that fellowship with god definitely unless you sort those things out you can't have fellowship with god so we need to go through death to enjoy life in our christian life to enjoy joy and peace in our christian life and as long as we are avoiding this we are just wasting our time we are not um, inflicting loss on anyone else we are the ones who are suffering loss is god suffering loss because of that no but he wants to have fellowship with us he doesn't need us does god need us no but he loves us so he wants to have fellowship with us it's a very sweet thing to be in that state of heart where you are 
ready to do anything for Jesus. We have all been there, haven't we? Have we all been there? Was there a time in all of our lives where we were ready to do anything for Jesus? Not to get an answer for prayer, not for something, but for Jesus alone. To have a relationship with Jesus, to draw close to Jesus, to hear his voice, for his presence. That is what we need. And that, brothers and sisters, is the first love. And if we don't have first love, and if we have everything else, what will the Lord say? What does the Lord tell uh, the church at Ephesus? Revelation chapter 2 verses 4 and 5. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. So, God says, if you don't repent, that me, I, uh, he means, if you don't come back to your first love, what will he do? He will not give a light punishment. He will kick them out. That is how serious it is. That is how valuable love is before God. And that love is uh, demonstrated through our willingness to do anything and everything for Jesus. Right? If we don't have that, if we have so many other things, uh, in verse 2 we read, to save time, I'm just reading. I know thy works, thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake uh, hast labored, and hast not fainted. So many things. Yet, if there is no first love, God is ready to kick them out. Can we imagine that? That is why the Apostle Paul says, without love I am nothing. But that love is not just a feeling in our hearts. Oh, I love Jesus. That is very, that is very easy. But what is God after? He is after that first love. We all had that first love. That first love was selfless. It had no self-centered things. It had no selfish motives. It was pure, purely for God. Our hearts were completely captivated by the cross. The love of Christ constrained us. We didn't know much of the Bible. We didn't know much doctrine at that time. But the state of our heart was, we were ready to do anything the Lord would demand us. But as time passed, our hearts started drifting. We were not careful. So what we need today is to come back. We need fellowship today. So for that what we need? We need to come back to that willingness to do anything and everything for Jesus. And uh, a major thing, a major problem in the church today I want to share with you is people are not ready to change. People are not ready to change. They are not ready to change. They are ready to do certain things. Okay, I'll do this, I'll do this. They have a list of things. But they are not ready to give everything on the altar. They have their own reservations. Okay, this much. This much, Lord. They are not ready to say, Jesus, you are the Lord of my all. I give you everything. And because of that very thing, they suffer the loss of the fullness of joy, the fullness of Christian life in them. And without that, we can't have fellowship with God. So why are we ready to surrender our everything? Not because we are foolish, not because we are out of our mind, but we saw something greater. We saw something greater. If you live for yourself, if you are the most... I have had this thought. I just want to share with you also. See, if you are the most, most selfish person in this world, you only think about yourself. You think about the comfort of your body, the pleasures of your body, uh, the desires of your heart. You live for yourself. Imagine that. Okay, you live like that. What good will that do to you? Will that be good for you? I mean, even if you are selfish, 
What do you mean by selfish? You love yourself. You want to take care of yourself. You want to do what's good for you. Okay, even if you do that, it's not good for you. So, it's actually foolish to be selfish. So that's why in Jesus' words, what did Jesus say? He who wants to save his life will lose it. He who loses his life for my sake will save it. So actually, even if you are selfish, you should not live for yourself. Because it's not good even for you. In the end of the day, you are going to suffer loss. You thought you are doing everything good for you. But in the end of the day, when your eyes are opened, you'll, you'll regret living for yourself. But those who didn't live for themselves, they will earn reward. But they were not after reward. So why does God do this? He's testing us. He's filtering out. He's preparing people for eternity. God's plan is in eternity, then he wants a group of people who are filtered out. Who are filtered out. And what must be the quality of these people? They are not after anything. They are so, they are so filled with God. Uh, they are so filled with their desire and love for God. They don't have anything else. They just want God. And to get that group of people, it's not easy. Why? Because God has given all of us a physical body with many needs. A world around us with many attractions. So many things apart from God. And God is invisible. We can't see Him. We can't hear His voice in our physical ears. So God seems to be far away from us. There are so many things to attract our attention. Still there will be a group of people who fight against all of these things and strive after God. I want God. And they are willing to do anything and everything. So God puts us through that filter, through that process. There are problems, sufferings on one side. And on the other side there are pleasures, enjoyments, attractions and all these things. So these people go through all of them. And in the end of the road, they come out, Lord, I don't want anything. I want you. Yeah. So he filters those people out and he sets them on the throne. But their heart is totally empty for themselves. They don't want anything. They, they are willing to be servants for God. They don't want heaven. They want God. So he sets them on the throne with him. And he rules with them throughout eternity. This is God's plan. That is why he wants us to Surrender. If we surrender our everything, will God get any profits out of it? No. Through this sacrifice, we are telling God, we are, we are, uh, we are not worthy. We can't say we are worthy for his kingdom. But this is how he prepares us for eternity. This is how he prepares for eternity. So, even if we are selfish brothers and sisters, it is not actually doing us any good. So being selfish is in one way foolish. But we won't realize today in the end of the road we will realize we have been selfish but we have uh, done uh, um, harm to ourselves. We have not benefited even ourselves. We thought we were benefiting uh, seeking our own desire, seeking our own, but we have lost everything. But those who sacrificed everything huh, those who sacrificed everything, they became kings. This is God's game. If we can use the word game, this is God's ways. That's why God's, God says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. As the heavens are high above the earth, my thoughts are high above your thoughts. So God's thinking is way different. So that is why Jesus says, if a man seeks to save his life, wants to live for himself, he will lose everything. He who wants to die for me, he will gain everything. So let's understand this mystery and as I said, let's strive to have fellowship with Christ. Brothers and sisters, it's so sweet to have fellowship with God like a friend, to talk with him. Many a time I have, uh, I have had dry moments in my Christian life where I'm committing many faults, I'm getting irritated, I'm not able to sacrifice what I need to sacrifice, I'm not able to work hard as I need to work hard. But all the while, 
back somewhere at the back of my mind there is a desire to go there sit in his presence and just get close to him get detached from this whole world get detached from this whole world forget about my ministry forget about my family forget everything become totally empty and just think about god and his love and pour out my heart before him and pour out my heart before him in desire to to win him to draw close to him lord i want you lord i want you and brothers and sisters when we come to that point that is where we receive the strength to do everything that we are called to do not when we are sitting and praying lord strengthen me strengthen me to do your work to do your work no but when we detach ourselves from everything else and we fill our hearts with god and we become so thirsty that we are willing to do anything and everything for jesus and out of that we cry out to god lord i want you hallelujah hallelujah at that time we will hear our master speaking to us hallelujah through his word through his spirit through songs he will speak to us and we will be strengthened and that is how brothers and sisters we are to live our christian life that is how we are to receive our supply of power and strength to live our christian life this is the means for our supply not just a prayer for strength a fellowship with god so what is standing in the way is our unwillingness to forsake everything for christ absolute surrender is not optional hallelujah and we must not do it half heartedly we must do it with all joy we read in matthew 13 that the merchant he went and sold all that he had with joy and then he bought that expensive pearl hallelujah god doesn't accept our sacrifice if we do it with a long face hallelujah paul says i counted all things lost for christ i count them as garbage hallelujah they can't be compared to the excellency of the knowledge of christ jesus i want to know him hallelujah paul was after christ what are we after can we say lord i want you i'm thirsty for you i'm willing to do anything and everything for you i have my failures i have my faults but lord this morning i desire you Lord I desire you. Let us pray for some time. Hallelujah. Let's take some time for prayer brothers. Hallelujah. Let's take some time to I'm not trying to waste your time. Trust me I'm not trying to waste your time. Let's take some time for prayer. Let's digest this message for some time. Hallelujah. Lord I want you. I thirst for you Lord. Yes Lord I've been unfaithful. Let's not pretend before God. Let us be what we are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is nigh to them that call upon him in truth. Lord, I need you. I don't want to avoid sacrifice. Though it's painful. Though it's It's not desirable to my flesh. Lord, your love. Oh, your love constrains me. Your love pulls me. Hallelujah. Let us feel the love of God pulling us to the altar. Lord, how much you love us. We want to have fellowship with you, Lord. when we are preoccupied with all the things of this world you so lovingly come to us knocking at our door and say when i behold i stand at the door and knock if any man open the door i will come in to him and will have fellowship with him 
as a friend to friend. Hallelujah. What a privilege, Father. We have been foolish in our selfishness, Lord. Lord, help us thirst for you. Help us long for you, Lord. Lord, help us long for that intimate fellowship we are called to have with you, Lord. We are not satisfied with what we have. Oh, Lord, draw us closer to you, oh, Lord. Many a time we don't find that willingness to forsake everything for you. Many a time we find our hearts hardened. We have settled for a routine, Lord. We don't, we don't miss our fellowship with you. We have ignored you, Lord. In the midst of our busy life, with all the things in this earthly life, we have lost sight of you. We come to you for help, but we don't come to you for fellowship. We don't thirst for you, Lord. We want some things from you, Lord. But we can't say that we love you like we should. Let everything else be secondary, O oh Lord. Our fellowship with you is what really matters. Whatever is standing in the way, whether it's people, whether it's things in this world, let it all be consumed in your love. O oh Father, we lay them all on your altar. Enable each of us to draw close to you. Enable each of us to draw close to you this morning, O Lord. Help us, O Lord. Let us pray. Father God, blessed be your holy name. We thank you for your word. Lord, we surrender ourselves to you completely. Lord, Enable us to have fellowship with you. Enable us to have fellowship with you, Lord. We realize the source for our strength is fellowship with you, Lord. We pray for strength. We seek solutions to our problems. But we neglect the need to draw close to you, Lord. Lord, teach us the lesson of drawing close to you even further, even more deeply. How we are to eat this word. How we are to digest this word, O oh Lord. Please help us. Help us, O oh Lord. In the midst of our earthly life. Hallelujah. Help us set our eyes fixed on you. As you are preparing us for your eternal kingdom. Lord, help us, Lord, just to stay focused on you. And to have that willingness to always surrender everything for you, Lord. To forsake everything for you, Father. We pray for your grace. We pray for your strength. We trust in your grace as we surrender ourselves to you, Lord. We are weak, but you are strong. You are our strength. We can do nothing on our own, Lord. Move our hearts. Stir our hearts. Let your spirit continue to stir our hearts towards absolute surrender as we part ways. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost be with us and with all our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world, till the Lord returns in the air. Amen. Amen. Let's praise God for the victory He gives us through Christ at all times, in all places. Hallelujah. 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 O oh Lord Jesus, do come soon. Amen. Amen. May God bless you.